My friends, you cannot be ready for what I'm about to tell you. This is first of a kind news. The short version is that we'll zoom into the Tarkankut Peninsula of Crimea. You know, this western edge of Crimea. Ukrainian SSO forces landed. Yes, you heard right. It's a full D-Day. They landed on this peninsula, messed around, made some occupiers sleep with the fishes, destroyed an S-400 complex and then pulled back. What? Insane story. But what really happened? I'll tell you all the details and we'll look at all of the videos. Let's go. So you notice this peninsula right here, the western edge. And right here is Odessa, it's the Black Sea. Well, let's zoom into the settlement. There's Olenivka and there's this Mayak. And if we zoom into Mayak, everything gets a lot clearer, believe me. This Mayak, Dom 6, Tarkan Kutsky Mayak. But what is this? A cafe. And if I click on it, it's Ukrainsky Berek in Grilica, which means Ukrainian shore. They have a cafe in Mayak called the Ukrainian shore in temporarily occupied Crimea. So Budanov, you know, the poker face Ukrainian head of intelligence was like, damn it, 24th of August, Independence Day of Ukraine. I haven't been to the Ukrainian shore restaurant or cafe for a long time in Crimea. Guys, we gotta do it. He summons the special forces and he sends them on full D-Day mission to this Ukrainsky beer cafe. On this footage you can actually see the Ukrainian SSO forces arriving in Crimea. You can see the shoreline and what? Is that a heavy machine gun on a speedboat? Of course it is. It's mandatory. Wouldn't be fun without it. But this very same Mayak base that I was zooming in for you, this is the home of the Russian 3rd Radio Engineering Regiment. Yes, the third radio engineering. So they're radio engineers. They're actually a lot more than that. But the name tells you they're not frontline fighters. They're more tied to logistics and communications. Very important troops. And also this Mayak area hosts Russian air defense systems and very powerful radars. Very rare, expensive and powerful high-tech Russian radars. That's goal on the western part of Crimea is to look all over the Black Sea and actually also into Ukrainian skies and know in advance who's coming, who's flying with what. Now, after the Ukrainian special forces landed, a heavy firefight ensued between the 3rd Radio Engineering Regiment of Russia in Mayak and the Ukrainian special forces. Heavy firefight and then the 3rd Radio Engineering Regiment, they deployed a fierce weapon, something that Ukrainians have never seen, a mutant soldier of some kind, a superhuman, and you can see it on this CCTV footage exclusively. This footage actually comes from Mayak on the morning of the firefight, 5 a.m. I mean, look at the strength of this guy, the determination, no pants necessary, only a Kalashnikov, a shirt and boxers and ready to go take out the entire Ukrainian intelligence department. If I first saw this footage, I was scared to the brink. Maybe they sent one to Estonia. I don't even want to think about it. A heavy firefight ensued, which very narrowly the Ukrainian special forces were on top. About 30 occupiers were sent to sleep with the fishes, including the super soldier, the Russian Terminator eliminated. A close one but a huge victory for Ukraine and on this photo you can see the Ukrainian special forces hoist their Ukrainian flag on temporarily occupied Crimean soil. Say Slava Ukraini, Heroem Slava. I'm sure after that they visited this Ukrainsky Berek cafe, Ukrainian shore cafe, took a coffee for Mr. Budanov with the poker face so he could drink it like he doesn't care and then they pulled away under fire, which you can see in this footage. It was a fighting retreat away from Crimea. Did I forget something? Oh yeah, yeah, remember this 400 complex, the very expensive and insanely capable Russian air defense complex I reported yesterday? Well, that was them. The huge explosion, that was these guys. They just, you know how the saying goes, go all the way and just then go a little bit more to destroy one of Russia's most expensive air defense complexes and then go back. This entire shenanigans was reported by Russian military blogger Rebar and also it was confirmed by the Ukrainian intelligence and like a few hours before this happened, Budan of the poker face god stated that Ukrainians have the ability to strike any part of Crimea with anything. And after this happened, here is Budanov confirming this operation and saying that it was very successful and that they eliminated an entire division. But my friends, now we gotta change subject because Prigozhin, you know, even after his death, he's still clowning around. Let's see what more information has surfaced around his suspicious death. 
who has said what? You know they say when you die, you will find out, or you won't, but everybody finds out what people think about you. Well, we have Igor Kirkin, Igor Strelkov Kirkin from Russian jail saying this about Prigozhin's death. Prigozhin should have been tried, not eliminated. Now he will not be able to testify. The dashing 90s are returning. And this is a very dangerous and fraught. This is an attack against the way Prigozhin was eliminated, an attack against Putin. 90s was a full mafia time in the Eastern Europe and Russia, where law was nothing. It was strong men and criminal organizations who led the country and exactly explosions like this were very regular. So the 90s in Russia are coming back. But Igor Strelkov wasn't the only one missing Prigozhin and saying good words about him. Here is Putin with official statement about Prigozhin, and it's, oof, it's something else. You know how Putin, when the mutiny was happening, he was telling, oh, traitors of the motherland, they should be executed, tried, fight them. He didn't even name Prigozhin, he didn't even name Wagner, he just named traitors. Well, now, he had all the good words about Prigozhin. He said Prigozhin was an excellent businessman. I and him got along very well and he was ready to help me when necessary. Praises like that coming from Putin could only mean that you're dead. <laughs> that's, that's the, before he couldn't even speak his name, Putin couldn't speak Prigozhin's name and now suddenly he has all the good words about him. Because he's sleeping with the fishes, he's knocked out cold, he's digging with the moles. Putin also promised a thorough and long and fair investigation to Prigozhin's death. It is so weird because after a thorough and long investigation, they will find out that Putin had him killed. But this is not it for people mourning Prigozhin and powerful people in Russia sharing good words about him. Now we get Gadurov, another strong man with a private military. This is what he had to say. Evgeny Viktorovich which is Viktorovich is his middle name, was very active for his age. And we, we are forgetting, Prigozhin was an old man actually, he was very active for his age. He was an important person on national scale, but recently he either did not see or did not want to see the full picture of what is happening in the country. I ask him to leave personal ambitions for the sake of matters of paramount national importance. Everything else could be decided later, but he was like that, Prigozhin, with his iron character and desire to achieve his goal, right here and now. And with this, the morning of notable, powerful people in Russia ends. But there's a new twist in the story. Nobody knows what really happens and the main plots are that there was an explosive device on the plane, that the plane was shot down by a Russian air defense system. Well, now the twist is that 23rd of August, right before Brigozhin got into the plane and flew away with it, strangers, and you can actually see it happening on this footage, strangers came to examine the plane and this group was led by the very same pilot that Brigozhin was flying with. The leak is that these people wanted to buy the plane and they were coming to examine it in what condition was it in. This is one way how the explosive device could have gotten on board. The Wall Street Journal reports that the United States intelligence believes that it was an explosive device. Many different intelligences all over the world believe different things, they have their own theories and this is what the US intelligence believe. The thing is, you gotta make your own mind about it. I have all of the links and the sources in the description below and I cannot give you the truth here because there is none. It's the work of the Russian secret service, there is no truth, there, there are different versions of it. Also, a lot of people in my comment section are saying that there was another plane flying behind Brigozhin's plane and this one turned around immediately when the Brigozhin's plane exploded. Well, that plane yesterday landed in Moscow and now today it has already flown to Azerbaijan. A lot of people saying Brigozhin is on that plane, he actually survived. Well, if Prigozhin comes back from the dead after three days like Jesus, well, he's going to be the next Jesus. Prigozhin Jesus. Again, I cannot say the truth. Perhaps he is on that plane. I personally do not believe it, but I cannot rule it out as a possibility. A leak came from the information close to the autopsy of Prigozhin and Utkin, and the leak says that there was signs of shrapnel on both of their bodies, in both of their bodies. Shrapnel meaning the plane could have been shot down with an anti-aircraft defense system or there was a bomb on the plane with shrapnel both ways. Well, anyway, he was taken out. It wasn't an accident. People all over Russia are mourning Prigozhin and Utkin. On this footage, you can actually see what's happening in front of Prigozhin's headquarters, Wagner's headquarters in St. Petersburg. People are bringing red flowers and mourning and crying and there's actually a sledgehammer because sledgehammer is the symbol of Wagner 
and it has become the symbol of the Russian world. And there are plenty of videos where Wagnerites use this for executions. It's, it's horrible. And these people are mourning and missing this guy. Prigozhin was a full-out war criminal with no guilt. But he was a very strong leader in Russia. Authoritarian, strong man. And Russian people really respect that. And they miss that from the Tsar times, from the Soviet times. It's very nostalgic for them if somebody is so much stronger than them. Prigozhin was that guy. So they're missing him, mourning him. On this photo you can see spontaneous memorials pop up all over Russia in different cities. I mean, he is missed in Russia by millions. And in the West he's a war criminal. What a weird world and division. But my friend, it only gets weirder and weirder. Now we have Svoboda Resiya, a Russian volunteer corps fighting under the armed forces of Ukraine for free Russia has sent a message for the remaining Wagnerites and you won't believe what's coming. Let's watch it. I am addressing the fighters of Wagner PMC for whom the words loyalty and honor still mean something. By all appearances, yesterday your elder Prigozhin, founder and commander Utkin, were cynically executed and you clearly know who is behind it. Therefore, you face a serious choice. Either join the ranks of the Russian Defense Ministry and serve the executioners of your commanders as their claimed hounds or take revenge. In order to take revenge, you must switch to the side of Ukraine. If you have not committed war crimes, we invite you to join our ranks. Let's together end this bloody meat grinder special military operation and then march on Moscow. And this time, let's not stop 200 kilometers away from the city and go all the way. Oof! Salty, salt left and right, spicy. At the end, this is like a stab, like you couldn't do it, my friends. Join us, let's do it together. I love how these Svoboda Resia guys are able to make this official statement and throw shade at the end of it. Great. My friends, we'll come back to Prigozhin's death at the end of this video because there is much more information I want to discuss with you. But right now, we cannot ignore what happened in Crimea last night. I'm not talking about the D-Day I reported earlier. Russian sources claim that 42, yes, 42 Ukrainian UAVs, drones, were destroyed over Crimea last night. 33 were suppressed by electronic warfare systems and 9 of them were shot down. You can hear the sound of the drones from this video. The Russian Ministry of Defense actually claims everything was shot down, suppressed, no drones connected to the target, don't worry about it, we destroyed the drones. But then on this video you can hear explosions. These explosions came from this area and zooming into Crimea and you see this airfield near Kvardyske already, military airfield. There's chopper installations here. There are plenty of planes, plenty of targets laying around here. This photo might be old Google Maps photo, but they, these planes are still here. It's a very active airfield. Now, I will translate what the Russian Ministry of Defense meant by intercepting all of the Ukrainian drones. See, they are doing it the Russian way, which is the opposite way. They intercept Ukrainian drones with their military targets. It's a win-win situation. You take out the drone, and you eliminate your need to uh, maintain the plane, for example. Because we all know Russians hate plane maintenance. They don't do it because it's such a tedious job. So they use their planes to intercept Ukrainian UAVs. To destroy them UAVs with their military target. It works. It's great. Great solution. Now, my friends, let's go back to the death of Brigozhin and the outcomes of the death of Brigozhin. Potential outcomes and I'll label you some of them. What might change? First of all, Prigozhin was a very capable military leader. He was a strong man, he was respected, he had authority in the Russian Ministry of Defense and in the Wagnerite ranks. Eliminating him is one very capable military leader less for Russia. At one certain six month period, Prigozhin was the only one making significant gains under the Russian Ministry of Defense in Bahmut. Although the price was bloody, he was the only one gaining some land, the other ones didn't. Other fronts didn't move at all. The second thing is Prigozhin had an insanely fanatical following. In Wagner ranks and in also in the Russian Ministry of Defense, he was an idol, a hero for some of these people, whose motivation was to be closer to him or to be like him or to destroy Ukrainians like him. It's all horrible and bad and ugly. But for these people, he was the, the idol, the god, the, the one who is opposing the Russian Ministry of Defense, the balancing factor. He's gone now, taking away a huge part of motivation from the soldiers who, who loved him, who followed him. These soldiers' motivation, morale, will drop like a bomb. They will not be the same fighters anymore. 
Third, Wagner rights, Wagner PMC as an effective fighting force will cease to exist because the Russian Minister of Defense and Putin will personally take over the leading command position of, of leading Wagner. And Wagner fighters are used to a very strong leader. Utkin and Prigozhin were the strongest one you can get. And this to replace with Shoigu and Putin. No, it doesn't work. You cannot replace a strong leader with a weak one. The whole system falls apart. So Wagner fighting efficiency will fall. One of the things that is under question is Wagner was a channel for money for a lot of the families whose men died under Wagner. Prigozhin paid them a lot of money to these families. Now that Prigozhin is dead, his channels are moving, these sums might disappear. We don't know that, perhaps Putin will continue paying them, but knowing Putin, I mean, he doesn't care, why should he? So a lot of tens of thousands of families might lose their income now. Prigozhin was their hero because the money came from him. These are some of the things, but it's only scratching the surface of what is going to change now after Prigozhin's death. I mean, this topic will bounce back for the next few weeks. The event is, is so big and, and the long-term outcomes and effects of it, we'll, we'll analyze this for a long time. Now, my friends, the Russian losses of the past 24 hours, 25th of August, 2023. 470 liquidated personnel, three tanks, 10 armored personnel vehicles, 28 artillery systems, one unguided rocket launcher, one anti-aircraft warfare system, which is not the S-400 because this was in the yesterday's uh, statistics. 17 vehicles and fuel tanks and one special equipment. And we'll end this video with a positive news. The Turkish company Bayraktar. Everybody knows the Bayraktar drones and the Bayraktar song. Well, for the Ukrainian Independence Day on the 24th of August, they decided to gift one free Bayraktar for the armed forces of Ukraine. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Turkey. With such great news, we can end this video, my friends, and end the week. I will be back with updates on Monday. So I'll do Monday to Friday, five days a week, and I'll rest on Saturday and Sunday, because otherwise I'll just, I'll go, I'll go crazy, honestly. But now, before I go, I want to thank the Patreons. People who keep this channel going, no matter what. We have Christoph Herndale. We have K.B. We have Sebastian Kuernhardt. Kuernhardt. Isaiah Luyan Larue and finally Andreu Lutka. Thank you to these five people for the support. If you like my channel, the Patreon link is in the description below. My friends, also check out my Twitter account and my Instagram account. More cool information there. And until my next video, which will be Monday, every day, Monday to Friday, stay cool, my friends, and bye bye.